Hey guys, Martin Singh here bringing up Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so today we are going to talk a little bit about the worldwide celebration, how it's been going, as well as looking back at the previous two worldwide celebrations. I've looked at last year's one in some videos before, just essentially talking about uh, content and like comparing the exact amounts of things that we got and seeing whether we were going to get certain things at certain dates and all that kind of stuff but i wanted to take a look at the celebration overall just to see some of the stuff that we did get on all three of the celebrations and how they compare also talk a little bit about you know what at least from what i remember the thoughts were on those celebrations at the time because it is kind of funny to look back and see celebrations that at the time i think people were not necessarily super hyped about um, and then of course as things progress and we get the next celebration and all that kind of stuff um, opinions can change over time like i think a lot of people have been very disappointed with this worldwide celebration overall in terms of the amount of content the pacing of the content um even like so far the difficulty level of the content like i've seen quite a few people complaining that we haven't really gotten any particularly difficult stages so far for any of these new events um, obviously that depends of course on your box like how easy certain events are going to be for you but it'll be interesting to take a look back because we look back to last year and we had the worldwide celebration based around time travel and the future saga and i remember when this celebration was going on last year there were a lot of complaints about different things right so Obviously, the headlining units for last year were the blue uh, Goku Vegeta that transformed into Vegito Blue and then LR Zamasu. Um, of course, you know, the <laughs> Goku and Vegeta will probably go down in history as one of those units that they certainly seemed like they could be very interesting and very cool on release, but they have a terrible transformation condition that even to this day, like using them, they can work sometimes if you're trying to use them, but their transformation condition is still incredibly annoying and often at times you know you just can't get it and that will directly cause you to lose runs by not being able to transform them funnily enough zamasu probably aged well i wouldn't say the best but he aged better than these guys and i would say sort of hope trunks future gohan kind of had a huge resurgence with some of the 200 percent teams that he's on now especially teams like the physical trio and stuff like that so uh, i don't know if i would say necessarily Zamasu aged the best out of the um, units but like even when the super bosses category became a thing right for global it was with the early release of rosé for jp it was with the um release of the agl Brody for the anniversary like there were still builds of that team where you would run this Zamasu because he could actually still be usable in the difficult content right so in terms of the headlining units like hit or miss with the uh, two dokon fest characters um, and then obviously typical event stuff, right? Med campaigns, tickets, which we got this time, co-op campaign, social media thing, special summons, obviously the uh, memorial stones, like all of this stuff is kind of the same. The banners follow the same sort of formats, so they update as they go with newer units. I mean, there's not really anything I would say comparable, you know, worse or better from last year because we follow the same sort of trend, having a certain up to a certain point in the calendar of like new Dokon Fests um we got some story events and some free-to-play characters um this year i think the free-to-play characters like paragus is okay i'm not a huge fan of trunks um interestingly this is the first worldwide i think for a while um i believe the anniversary does the same thing where we get a free-to-play unit that has the new mechanic so like this free-to-play uh, trunks from the new event had a domain because domains were introduced last year with the worldwide celebration 2023 um and this year like we did not get a free-to-play unit with a uh, i guess the dragon ball mechanic would have been the new mechanic right and only gohan has that featured um a lot of the other stuff was the same like the event to get extra stones per day link levels ex skill orbs and stuff like that so one event that i definitely want to talk about for this uh, comparing the three celebrations is kind of like the unique special events that we got so for last year for the future saga worldwide we got the divine wrath and mortal will event 
Now, this event is kind of interesting, right? There was some stages. It's kind of like anything when they bring out new red zones or anything like that, where the first couple of stages were obviously very easy. Um, I think we had the first few. You got like Trunks, um, Goku Base, Goku Black, Super Saiyan Goku, Rose. Those four were all very, very easy. Um, the Blue Boys, only one phase, but I think they started to hit a little bit harder. AGL Zamasu, I think, was the first one that I saw people starting to say was, like, a little bit harder. And then, of course, we got the Vegito Blue one, which was a very interesting stage, but very much like a gimmick fight, right? He can double super, he can do huge damage, but you can attack lower him, um, which is certainly, like, the best mechanic. People were beating him with all sorts of funny teams with attack lowering characters on there. So that was an interesting one. And then Zamasu in stage eight was pretty hard. And of course the Trunks in stage nine actually was up there in like the higher tier with the hardest events like in the game by the end of the worldwide celebration, right? Like this was up there. I don't know if I would say it was as hard as Red Zone Fusion Zamasu, but this was up there with being one of the more difficult events in the game. So that's something to bear in mind when we think about this year's celebration. Now, obviously, we're getting a blue zone, which is comparable to the red zone from last time. But in terms of the unique event, um, I guess for this one specifically, it would be the Devil Awakens event, right? With the first stage versus movie eight Broly, second stage movie 10 Broly, third stage Bio Broly. Now, the thing that was really interesting about this event, I did like the fact that we had the missions were all like clues they weren't like completely spelled out. i don't want to say they were difficult or anything right because like you know the movie eight mission was like beat the stage with the golden saiyan that broly hates or whatever like very obviously it was use goku right so like they weren't super hard to figure out exactly what the missions were but i thought that was kind of a cool idea and the fact that by bringing certain characters on your team at least in the first two stages you could either buff or debuff the boss like i thought that was a pretty cool idea so the event itself, however, in terms of the difficulty, um, I mean, I guess stage one, uh, when you're using a Super Saiyan Goku for that mission and he's getting the big buff, like, could be quite tough. Um, I didn't find the second one as hard, but then I suppose coming from the perspective of, like, you had to use a Gohan and a Goten on the team and stuff like that. So I think I did use the Go Bros, but I was, I believe I was using the physical trio team. So it's kind of one of those things where if you are using the new premium units, then obviously some of these events are going to be a little bit easier. But in terms of overall difficulty, uh, I saw a lot of people really disappointed with stage three versus Bio Broly because they changed it up a little bit. And for the missions for his stage, you just have to use a specific item rather than bring a specific character. Um, and yeah, just overall, the event definitely did not feel as difficult as some of the other ones, uh, some of the others, well, the other two stages, right? So that's interesting. That was the unique event from the uh, Worldwide last year. Um, now, if we bring up the Worldwide Celebration from 2022, the cooler Worldwide Celebration, my general recollection, because this is the thing, I don't want to try and rewrite history here as people will often do. Like on Twitter, people were like, I can imagine people saying, if you've ever seen anyone during this worldwide celebration saying that like this worldwide celebration is really disappointing. Last year's one was like awesome. It was so much better. Remember that last year people were complaining about stuff as well. Whereas the cooler one, I feel like this was widely received as being one of the best celebrations in the game, probably until we got the ninth anniversary, right? Or maybe even the eighth anniversary people for the hype, um, I'm not sure people's opinions changed a little bit on the 8th anniversary after it was over, but um, definitely the 9th anniversary. Um, the units were really good. Cooler was super good at the time. Birdku was obviously really good at the time as well. Uh, the introduction of the Dokon X Carnival format, I guess, is what the one of the things that people were not necessarily sold on straight away, um, but is obviously something that has carried on and been like tweaked here and there as time goes by. Um, something that we're definitely going to be seeing more of now that we've had the uh, anniversary and the worldwide celebration now this year follow this same format. So you can imagine that this is the format that we're going to be seeing now going forward for these big celebrations. But when it was first released, especially because it brought with it a new coin, so it was yet another thing to like have to manage and save up and currency to trade for units. A lot of people weren't too happy about that. Um, but the units were very good. 
Um, and don't get me wrong, like I've said before many times, like in terms of this worldwide celebration, the summonable units is definitely like a major thing that they got right. Like all four of the summonable units, I think, for the worldwide celebration this year are really, really good. So just to make that 100% clear, um, the units, I don't think have ever really been much of a disappointment um, for the worldwides outside of like, you know, little gripes with like the Blue Boys transformation condition and stuff like that, right? So everything else, you know, similar, all the same sort of stuff here, co-op campaign, tickets, memorial stones, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then when it came to the unique event, we got the uh, Wicked Blood and Red Zone, obviously. Last year we got the Dismal Future Red Zone, this year we got the Blue Zone. Uh, the main thing last year was this, the Fighting Spirits of the Saiyans and Pride of the Wicked Bloodline. Now, this was the other thing that I can say I saw uh, in the cooler worldwide celebration that had people a little bit... Um, a little bit mad for some of these, right? Because this was this event where you could you had to use specific characters in order to do like extra damage right so like you could only use certain characters like goku family and namekians heroes from the coolers revenge movie do increase damage now obviously this is designed I mean, it's a gacha game at the end of the day right these missions are going to be way easier if you've pulled the new headlining units but a lot of people were complaining about having these new units being boosted in these events and everything but like I think Minato and I at the time both did, especially for, I think it was the last one where you have to use like the, yeah, movie bosses and terrifying conquerors, enemies from the cooler movie, uh, deal increased damage to Goku and Vegeta, the final stage. I did a video beating this stage with the full free to play metal cooler team. So like it was a lot more difficult and there was a lot of RNG. Like, you know, if you got the wrong unit got supered or something like that, you could die for sure. But the event was absolutely beatable with free to play characters right you didn't have to pull all of the new worldwide celebration units otherwise you just literally couldn't beat the event right certainly easier if you pull the new featured units but as we say right with a gacha game that's the kind of thing you would expect right so this was the unique event for that celebration relatively difficult a relatively decent level of difficulty um obviously depending on whether you pulled those new units would depend whether it was going to be easier or not um but yeah overall relatively decent now the other big thing outside of the unique uh events is things like the easy a's right so for this worldwide namek goku's easy a at the time really really good Full Power Freezer was actually really good. I think he kind of got underrated a little bit, but he, he was definitely solid at the time. The um, Physical Cooler, I think this was a sub easy A, right? Because another character can bring Zoom Z Awakened um, through this event. So the Part 1 easy A's for the Cooler Worldwide Celebration, pretty good. Um, and then for this Worldwide, we got the AGL Zamasu and Tech Transforming Trunks. Trunks was kind of a weird one because this celebration introduced this new meta of really difficult events that were short and like really difficult from turn one so trunks being a stacking unit didn't really help him out very much uh, in the meta that was kind of being introduced with this celebration and then of course when it came to this year's worldwide the main part one lr uh, the main part one easy a was of course in broly who i think a lot of people very very disappointed i think especially now that we've seen the physical goten and trunks easy a as the part like three easy a um they are like considerably better than in broly like it's crazy the difference right so going back to the cooler worldwide bunch of the similar kind of stuff in uh terms of events and campaigns and all that kind of stuff then we got the extreme z awakening for the agl metal cooler now, this guy was pretty good on Easy A as well, at least at the time, right? Because these big celebrations all essentially seek to buff like one big category. So with this one, it was Wicked Bloodline. This guy worked really well on the team. Uh, last year, of course, it was kind of a combination of like Future Saga, Time Travelers, Realm of Gods. Um, and then this year, obviously, has been Movie Bosses and then kind of Movie Heroes, Kamehameha, like that, those kind of teams. So this guy at the time, very good and worked very well on those teams um obviously getting more of the stages uh we've got the free to play characters easy a's um and then i think that was it for part two for last year and uh for the 2022 cooler one then for the future saga worldwide celebration last year we got future gohan's easy a um 
Remember that we did also get in part one, I should mention, with the Zamasu and Trunks, we did get their sub EZAs. And then with these guys, we did get the um, other units as well, like the Tech Super Saiyan Trunks. Um, I think Gawasu and Zamasu, some other ones as well. Um, so a lot more EZAs, right? Yeah, this is it. With this Extreme Z battle, we got these guys and we got Vegito Blue, Tech Vegito Blue and STR Rose. Um, and then I think in this one, that was all for the part two. So far for part two in this celebration, we got what? Tech LR Broly's EZA. Um, I think that was it, right? And I haven't forgotten somebody. And then part three, as we move into this final part, we've gotten the Prime Battle LR Bio Broly who EZA'd straight away. We got the free to play Bio Broly EZA and we got the um, Goten and Trunks EZA. Now the Goten and Trunks EZA is really, really good. The Cooler Celebration, um, revamp of some story, Last Red Zones, STR Cooler's EZA. Now, at the time when this came out, this was crazy. Like, this guy was really, really good, had been a great TUR on release when he got his EZA at the time. Um, he was arguably up there as being one of the best uh, EZA TURs in the game. Kind of funny, actually, considering that that was the Part 3 EZA and then Goten and Trunks this year are kind of in this same situation. Um, and then, of course, we used to have Chain Battle back then. Um, and then when it came to the Worldwide uh, for last year with the Future Saga, Part 3, we got a couple of easy A's. I think one of them came right near the end, but we got Ink Goku Black. Now, in terms of like the Part 3 initial Dokkan Fest easy A, I think this year's one definitely uh, was the worst, right? Because this guy, same with Tech Trunks, was releasing as a stacker into a meta that just did not really favor those kind of units right so goku black's easy a he could be usable in certain events for sure but he really wasn't that great um, and then as we move towards the end of the celebration we also then got the easy a for lr in rose who i think he was a bit under underrated but on release was really really good um, and then for this one we didn't get like an extra easy a at the end so of course we're at the point now with this worldwide where we could still get, because remember, look, this Int Rosé EZA came out on the 3rd of October. So we're still a good week or so away from the very final things that could come out as part of the Worldwide Celebration. Um, a lot of people are hoping for like STR, Broly, Super EZA, whether it's the TUR or the LR. Um, I'm still hoping we get something like the Extreme Z battle that we got here in, it was part two, wasn't it? Go back to part two here. The one we got here in part two for last year, where we got a bunch of these guys all EZA at the same time. Like something like this, but an Extreme Z battle for the STR Trunks banner unit from In Broly's banner, uh, who really should have EZA'd in part one. Uh, the physical Gohan, who was the banner unit for the Go Bros, who's uh, from movie 10. And then um, the Tech Krillin from the Bio Broly movie to obviously help out physical Goten and Trunks. Like all three of those units realistically should have easy aid. So hopefully we're going to get some kind of like extra extreme Z battle thing here to easy aid all of those guys. Um, it's still strange that they didn't just do them as immediate sub easy A's for these new characters. They've even done the things in the past where they put missions. So like beating the Int Broly easy A with just complete missions so that you then get the medals to do the sub easy A straight away. And they could have just done that and had Trunks easy A like immediately. Um, but they haven't done that, so we're still kind of waiting to see what these final things are going to be for the celebration. So I suppose on the one hand, you can say it's a bit preemptive to kind of try and compare these celebrations when the one that we're in right now technically hasn't finished yet. But I thought it would be interesting to take a look back at some of this stuff because I have seen people saying, and you know, I don't know if I'll be that hyperbolic in the title but you never know youtube titles you gotta be a bit crazy um people have been saying this is like the world worst worldwide celebration ever now the thing about that is obviously you know when you think back to the game like four or five years ago even um i'm sure we've had much worse like celebrations than this one um in fact like a lot of people i've gonna i'm gonna have a video coming up to celebrate the fact that we're gonna be syncing up uh, fully very soon um, going over all the top five or top ten, however we break down the video, global W's and global L's of the past. And a big one that's going to come up that we get that we'll talk about is the uh, worldwide celebration where Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta, and Physical Omega released on both versions at the same time, but obviously released on global 
with the to be released leader skill which uh was a huge controversial move that a lot of people still reference now as being a massive global l so there's definitely been worldwide celebrations that have been more controversial i guess we could say but overall the general consensus in the community seems to be one of major disappointment this celebration seems like it's been way more lax in terms of overall content um the pacing has been really bad like we have gone hot times where there's been almost a full week without anything else being introduced and we've talked about in the past you know there are arguments on either side of this right like a lot of people don't play the game every day or don't or even if they do they play for like 20 30 minutes maybe so it's not like we need to have a constant like multiple things must come out every single day otherwise the game's dead like that's definitely not the case but it wouldn't hurt and we've talked in the past about how easy it would be to add content when it comes to things like adding category missions for some of the difficult events and stuff like that things like that are very very easy and low effort to do and keep those people who do play a lot engaged but when you look at even just straight up things like comparing to last year the number of easy a's that we've gotten so far like the number this year is just way way down compared to the year before so whilst i am still expecting something to be revealed in the next week or so whether it's going to be a super easy a whether it's going to be those sub easy a's obviously we have no way to know but as it stands right now it definitely feels like this worldwide celebration has been incredibly disappointing and i would say just from my own personal experience again taking out like the summonable units because i think they did a great job with summonable units this year i think they're all really really good but in terms of the worldwide celebrations the last three years future saga the this movie one and then of course the uh cooler one from 2022 i would say out of the three this one feels like it is the worst one so let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section how have you been enjoying the worldwide celebration what do you think about it compared to last year with the future saga and the year before with the cooler movies let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section and what if anything do you expect to be announced uh to end this worldwide celebration i know a lot of people are hoping for like big surprise reveal of like namek goku and full power freezers easy a because of course they were previous worldwide celebration uh, lrs the worldwide celebration lrs before them were the vegeto and boo who obviously have easy aid already so that would be kind of cool but if that's kind of the only thing that gets served up as like here's the final thing for next week i don't feel like as cool as that could be and they could be the two best new easy a's in the game i don't think that's enough to save the celebration but let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section so that is going to be it for the video guys this has been the master ningen smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out all the links down below and i will see you all again soon have a good one